Hey guys. Thanks for joining. It's my clock. Um, let's probably just give one minute um, and see if anyone else joins uh, and then we can start. Can you guys uh, hear me? All right. Um, if you could, maybe you can on, in the chat, give a thumbs up or an indication that you guys can hear me. Can you guys hear me? Can you guys hear me? Hey guys, I'm just, you know, mic check. Uh, if, if you guys can hear me and see my screen, um, would you mind just putting in the chat there? Yeah, you guys can hear me and I'll, I'll probably get started. Hey guys. Um. I'm assuming you guys can hear me. All right. Let me just quickly ask. Um, we well, got seven guys. Um, I'm gonna get started. Can any one of you hear me? Hello. If you can hear me, could you guys um put in the chat? Let's make sure you guys can hear me before I can start. Oh, awesome. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Tenet. Thank you very much. All right. <laughs> All right. Thanks for that. It's, it's just that this is a workshop. It's self-service. And, you know, it, it just, it's just with virtual right, conference. Um, don't know if you guys can hear me. So thanks for that. Uh, we have seven, seven people in the room, so not that many. And so if you guys have any questions, uh, during this uh, workshop, you know, I, I guess you can request to share your screen and mic if you want. We can always pause and take some questions, or if you want as well, just just drop into the chat. Right, we'll try and make this interactive. Hopefully, you guys get value out of today's workshop. So, all right. So today we have a typical scenario where we have a single page application needing to communicate with a protected API endpoint to access some protected resource that sits behind this API endpoint, right? And in order to use this single page application, right, our users will first have to authenticate to gain access to the application. And within this pool of users that have, that have access to the application, only a subset of them uh, has elevated privileges or permissions to access the protected resource that sits behind the API endpoint. So how can we implement access control, right? So that only the subset of users with the right privileges can actually call the protected API endpoint to gain access to the resource. Or to phrase it more correctly, how can we implement authentication and authorization so that only administrators in this pool of users gain access to the protected resource? So my name is John and I'm a solutions engineer at Off Zero. And today we'll take a look and see how we can implement access control for your API endpoints really quickly, simply, and efficiently yeah, using Off Zero. Right. And so because we are uh, leveraging Off Zero's capabilities here today, right, we'll start off from an agenda point of view, give you a quick two-minute kind of developer's take uh, of what Off Zero is. And then follow that, we'll be jumping into the live coding session where we will be building out a brand, uh, a brand new application from scratch, implementing authentication and authorization, and thereby implementing access control for your API endpoints. And then if time permits, all right, uh, we'll jump into a Q&A session. And just in case we run out of time and you guys have questions, please feel free to reach out um, 
uh, reach out to me on any of the following channels. And I might as well, you know, just copy and paste that within the chat in case you guys need to reach out to me. Uh, let me actually format that a little bit. Um, oh, sorry. Oh, that is, it's in the chat, but it's not formatted correctly. All right, and as well, if you have questions, you know, feel free to pop by uh, into the off zero booth after this talk as well. All right, so what is off zero? So off zero is a service for application builders to authenticate and authorize users into their applications. All right, authentication and authorizations has been around for a very long time, decades, but it is an ever changing and evolving landscape. New security threats uh, surface up, new best practices, um, standards emerge, new ways to do authentication are constantly being developed. Take, for example, the recent sign-in of Apple ID or the up-and-coming web of N. Now, when I speak to developers or application builders that have to build and maintain an in-house identity solution, oops, hang on, let me get that back on track. Uh, screen. All right, so when, when I speak to application builders that have to build or maintain an in-house identity system or legacy system, they tell me that they do it with a lot of pain and frustration. Not only is there a steep learning curve, the complexity and risk that they often have to deal with right, uh, or in phase are often underestimated, which negatively impacts their time to market. And what's most troubling uh, for them is the fact that usually they aren't security experts. No organizations typically grant them that kind of luxury to focus solely on identity. So what Austria has done is taken all the years of best practices, know-how, and security expertise and packaged it into a service so that developers, application builders can simply pick it up, use it, and not have to worry about implementing identity. And instead, focus all that time and energy in solving their key business problems instead. Like we like to say at Off Zero, you know, we like to want to secure the world's identity so that in innovators like yourselves can focus on innovating, right? And what you see here in this slide is essentially kind of a 50 foot view of what Off Zero does, all the features and capabilities. Uh, and in today's workshop, we'll just co be covering a small subset of these. Right, so, Jumping to the live coding session here today, um, in this session, we will be creating an Office Road tenant, and then we will actually create and configure an application from scratch to use Office Road for authentication. We will then modify the application to call our protected API endpoint, and then implement role-based access control for authorization, and kind of you know see it all in action here today. All right, so let me... That. Right, so the first thing you know, we need to do is to pop over to offzero.com and sign up for an offzero account. Right, so head to offzero.com, click sign up there, simply entering uh, your email and a password or any of the social logins here. Right, and once you've created and uh, signed up for an offzero account, offzero will direct you to create an offzero tenant. So, and this is what you'll see here. So let's go ahead and actually create an Office tenant here today. So let's call it API Days Workshop. And let's keep it today's date, 2020, 0008. And because I'm based out here in Singapore, Australia is not the closest region there. I'm going to select the Australian region and select my personal account, click and click Create. Right, and once Off Zero has created the tenant, right, it will direct you to what you see here, um, the Off Zero management dashboard, right? It is a graphical user interface that allows you to manage your tenant configuration. And kind of to digress just a little bit, because we're an API first company, all the tenant management features that you see here are actually exposed by our Off Zero management API. So there's a handy little link here if in your tenant docs management API. If you click that, it'll bring you to a page where it documents all our APIs that we expose, as well as how to use them, right? And 
if you're a big proponent of agile practices, particularly around CI, CD, like myself, then one of the things that's really useful with Austero is that it allows you to manage the tenant configuration here as code. So what this means is that you can version control it, programmatically deploy it to your various um, environments like staging, QA, uh, production, etc., and then roll them back if necessary. So we provide you with the tools to import, export all these tenants to your config together with all these APIs, allow you to seamlessly plug in into any existing CI, CD uh, workflow that you have. And at this point, it's just probably worth pointing out in this live demonstration, I do have an accompanying uh, GitHub repository here, just in case you guys can't see my screen and want to follow it you know, or revisit the code at a later time. I am just going to copy this link here so that you guys can also follow or revisit it at a later time, right? And in this commits, you will actually see how I actually manage uh, this tenant configuration uh, as code, basically. All right, so for example, in this repository, if you go tenant, you can see how it is actually managed by a YAML file. All right, so Kind of coming back to the uh, Off Zero tenant here, sorry to digress, right? So we have signed up for an Off Zero account and we have created an Off Zero tenant. So if we head back to the slides here, I can cross that very first one out. We have created an Off Zero tenant, right? So the next thing we need to do is to create and configure a brand new application from scratch to use Off Zero for authentication. And to do that, let's head back to the Offshore dashboard, right? So we do not have, we not yet have an application, but what we're going to do here is in Offshore create a model or representation of our application. And to do that, I am going to click here, create application. So let's give my application a name, say call it my website, right? And you can see Offshore supports a wide range of application types for your native apps single page web applications, regular web apps, as well as machine to machine applications, which also consists of APIs. In today's demonstration, we are gonna build out a single page web app. So I am gonna select that, I'm gonna hit create. All right, and Offshore will then ask us a couple of questions. And in this case, uh, what our tech stack is. So Offshore supports uh, over 65 ready to use uh, SDKs and quick starts um, that we can simply pick it up, drop it into our app and we're up and running. And for single page apps, you can see that we have four SDKs here for Angular, JavaScript, React and Vue. Uh, in today's demonstration, I am going to build our plain vanilla JavaScript single page app. So I'm going to click that. And Offshore is going to give us a couple of options here. So in the typical use case, Customers will have an existing app. I instruct on how you existing app with Offshore. And we provide what we call here as live documentation, which are snippets of code that you can simply copy and paste it to your app and you get up and running, right? And it's live documentation because it contains, uh, it comes preceded with your tenant settings, making it that much easier to copy and paste. Right. And so Austro focuses a lot on the developer experience. And it's just little things like this that we do that developers really appreciate us for. For our use case today, we are going to make use of this second option, which is uh, to download a sample application. So Austro will build and precede an entire sample application um, with attendant settings that you can use as a base for your app or simply as a playground. So we will be clicking download sample and using that as our base for our application. I am going to click that download button and while it is downloading, let's take a look at the instructions provided by Offshore. So it says to say here that to set the allowed callback URL, the allowed web origins, as well as the allowed logout URLs to localhost 3000, right? So let's go ahead and update those settings. So I pop back here, click the settings tab, Right, let's update the allow callback URL, the logout URLs, as well as the allow web origins. So a little pro tip here, because 
Off0 treats local hosts slightly differently, essentially for security reasons, because it's not a non-verifiable first party, right? It treats it differently. So let's actually alias that um, local host to my website. And because we're no longer using local hosts, right, the Austro uh, SPA SDK that we'll be using today uses the Web Crypto API, which requires that we run off a secure local context. So I am going to run it over HTTPS. So let's copy that and update the logout URLs as well as the allow web origins as well. And let's not forget to click save changes. That trips me up quite a bit sometimes. All right, so let's pop into my terminal and actually um, copy the downloaded file. So let me copy downloads LJS. Yeah, let's unzip it. And then let's actually just clean up by removing the zip file there. And let's go into the downloaded directory. All right, so let's actually now set this, um, let me actually open up this downloaded sample application and configure it to run over a local secure context. Just again, you know, I see some you guys have joined as well. If you have any questions, you know, this is a small group here today, please feel free to just drop in chat any questions you have or, you know, ask for a permission to share your screen and, and, and audio as well if you want to have an interactive session. All right, so let me open up these, this downloaded application uh, in my IDE. So let me go open. And share it, um, let me share that with you guys, All right? There you see. So to, to actually launch our <clears throat> application over local secure context, origin in this case, let us actually just, uh, you know, update two files here. The first is uh, this triple W file uh, under the bin folder. We are just going to be using the server.js file that we require here, right? So we can remove all the rest of the code down there and let's open server.js. And I am going to copy a bunch of boilerplate code here and just replacing it that here. And we can see what those changes are if I go into local history here and just show history. So essentially, the changes that we made from the downloaded sample app here is that we just required the HTTPS and the file system NPM modules. And what we're really doing is we're just reading in our SSL certificates and then launching or creating our server to use those certificates. So that's all that it's doing. And just for, oops, and just for the interest of all those that just joined us as well, right, you can follow with the code changes um, either concurrently or at a later time by visiting this um, GitHub repository as well, right? And it's in the chat that I pasted that. I'm just worth, worth pasting it just one more time. All right, so with those changes, um, Let's actually go back to the terminal here and actually install our SSL certificate. So to do that, I'm going to use an application called Mixert. I call it my uh, website. And just to round out the conversation, uh, let me quickly show you my ETC host file to just show you that uh, I have alias my website right, to local host there. So now we can actually do npm install. And let's clear that, let's clear that and npm start. Right, so now if we load the application, and you notice that we are running over HTTPS there and using my alias uh, to my website. 
Right, so at this point, it's probably just worth spending a little bit of time to understand a little bit about the application that we downloaded. And essentially, there are just three files that are of interest here. The first is the index.html, right, which is essentially our single page app containing all our HTML tags. And the part of this that we are interested in, right, just, okay, we're interested in is at the bottom of this file, uh, which is the script tags here. Uh, this particular script tag here, you can see we are using the Auth0 Spa SDK. The current latest version is 1.9, so I'm going to go ahead and update that. This gives us the ability to use the latest features of this SDK as well as the Auth0 platform. The other two files are here, UIJS and app.js. Let's pop over to the public folder, JS folder here. So, as controls is really the view controls the view of our application because we're not using any uh, framework here we are writing our own router which looks at the URL path and depending on the path that it is on will display the appropriate view uh, and in app.js essentially contains the core logic of our application so it handles things like like login here and log out Right. And it is also actually configuring or initializing our SDK here. So let me actually go ahead and just add another parameter, cache location, to local storage. And the reason I'm doing this is so that we can actually debug the application um, in this workshop and actually take a look and see what parameters or what information of your returns to the application. Right, so I've done that. Let me restart um, this application. Right, and let me refresh that. So now when I click login, right, the user is redirected to Off0 where Off0 is handling the authentication request. And because this is a new tenant, uh, Off0 tenant, there are no users left. So let's actually go ahead and sign up for um, new account. So click there, I'm going to click sign up. All right, and let me just make sure that uh, the cache is cleared. Okay, it's like data. Let me just go back again. My website there. All right, click one more time. More time. Let me sign up. And, and then I'm actually signed up and logged in. And if I take a look at my profile, you can see a subset of the information that is written by Off0 to the application, right? So you can see nickname, name, email, etc. Right, so it's worth so if I head back now to my slides, we have actually created and configured an application to use Off0 for authentication. And it's a good point here uh, at this point to actually pause and actually pull back the curtains and see actually what happens you know, under the layers. So I've got a handy diagram here that kind of explains, you know, helps you to explain what's going on. So we still have our single page application. We still have our API endpoint. Uh, but now we have something here that is the Off0 service or rather the authorization server. So Off0 under the covers uses Open ID Connect, right? And so part of that protocol is once the user has validated their credentials, right? Off0 as part of the OIDC protocol or specification will return an ID token to the application, thereby proving who the user say he is, right? And and this single page application is using the Austro Spa SDK, which is really doing all the heavy lifting uh, under the scene, behind the scenes, right? Because it is implementing all the OAuth or OpenID Connect protocols and preventing certain security attack vectors like CSRF attacks. With a few function calls, we are using and leveraging Austro's service there to implement authentication, right? So that is what's happening. So remember how we set the 
cache location to local storage. So we can actually pop into now our local storage here, right, and take a look and see the ID token that is written by of zero. So if I click here, I can see ID token. Let's actually copy that and head over to jwt.io or jot.io for short, and let's decode that token here. Right, so as part of the OpenID Connect protocol or standard, right, you can see that getting the ID token, we are returning the standard claims as part of the specification. So for example, name, email address, subject, audience, etc. So that is really what's happening behind the scenes and using off zero with the SDKs, all these are handled transparently for you. All right, so we've crossed that one out. The next thing we need to do is to modify the application to call an API. So again, any questions, guys, uh, are you following? If not, please feel free to drop in the chat. I'll, I'm just kind of checking it occasionally to see if there are any questions. All right, so let's actually make modifications to the application to call an API. And what I need to do is, if you notice this drop down here, right, I'm gonna add a little but a new button here to trigger our API endpoint, or trigger the call to our API endpoint. So to do that, let's head into index.html and let's, um, let's copy uh, a button here and we shall modify. So I am gonna copy this here, copy, paste it there, all right, and remove that ID. I don't need it on click. I am gonna call a get secret function. Right. And this will call our API endpoint, which will return a secret code to us. Right. And I will update the text here as well, get secret, and to kind of just round, make it look nicer, I am gonna update this font awesome to use user secret. So let's actually see if I wired all that up correctly. So and restart the app again, right, and refresh. So now if I drop down, right, oops, the icon's not correct, um, but if I open the console here, let's trigger that one. Right, I am getting, as expected, uh, get secret is not defined. We haven't actually defined the function to make that API call. So let's go and fix that icon as well as this function. So get secret, a typo there. All right, okay, and let's implement the get secret function in app.js. So let's scroll down to the bottom of our app here and declare that function. So get secret, right, and we're making some asynchronous calls here, so we're gonna declare this. Uh, asynchronous function, a s y n c, right, um, right, and we are going to make a fetch test to the API endpoint, and I am going to populate that URL in just a little bit. Let's first set up some of the parameters here. So it is the it is going to be a get method, and we need to specify some headers here. The first is just the content type. Will be application JSON, right? With the character set equals to UTF eight. Did I type that all correctly? Yeah, it looks good. And because this epic, the response will be a JSON format, so let's actually also um, parse that response. So that will be secret, secret equals uh, response dot JSON there. So, yep and asynchronous the fetch as well so put in a weight there as well right and let's just for debugging 
let's actually log that response out, right? So response is Right, so let's test that out. Right, so let me clear the screen one more time. Um, and actually just make this full screen, right? So right. hit that, oops, hit back to my app. Yep, let me refresh. All right, so let's actually now trigger the call to our API endpoint. Get secret. Up, uh, uh, async. Because there's some typo here. Let me see what's that. Uh, or I always get tripped up on this. I forgot to actually populate that URL. So let's fix that. So I got the URL to my API endpoint. Let me actually just copy that and paste it. Copy the code. Oh, that should work. So maybe I got to restart the app again. And refresh. Now, when I try and call the API endpoint, right, you can see that it returns me a message unauthorized. If we actually look at a network tab, right, you can see that I am getting back a 401, right, unauthorized access there. So why is that happening, right? So we have modified the application to call an API. I guess we could cross that one out. Let's understand a little bit, uh, you know, kind of behind the scenes why it's failing. So like I mentioned, Officero under the covers uses Open ID Connect and a part of the, which is built on the OAuth 2 protocol. So when you're trying to access a resource server, in this case, our API endpoint, right? As part of the protocol, it expects um, an access token and we haven't actually gotten an access token to pass it to the API endpoint and that's why there's no access token we aren't really authorized to call it right so what we need to do is have the app make an authorization request to off zero so that it returns us an, an access token which then we can make an API call and pass it in the authorization header that access token, which the API will then validate um, to check if it's a valid credential and if valid, return the resource to the application. So let's go ahead and fix that um, in all zero. So the first thing we need to do is pop back to the dashboard and actually create a model or a representation of that API. So what we're gonna do here is we are going to APIs in the dashboard here and click create API. So let's give it a name, my secret API, and let's actually use that as our identifier as well. And let's click create. Right, and for, once you create the API, Officer does provide you with some template here, code, and for all purposes of this demonstration, you can assume that my API endpoint is running a similar code where it is actually validate, sorry, validating the access token and checking if it has the right permissions before granting access to the resource. Actually, API endpoint here has some code that is running to validate that access token. Right, so we have created the API. Let's actually define the scopes or the permissions that this API has in relation to that resource. I'm going to add get secret, read secret here, which is really the ability uh, for the application to read a secret. And that, right, and you can have a bunch of other um, uh, scopes and permissions. For example, update, Secret. And this could be, you know, that maybe just for super, super admins, right? Where they can update secrets. So update secret. So just click update that as well. Right. So we have defined our API. We have defined permissions as scope related to that. Let's actually now modify our application to actually request for that access token to be passed to the API endpoint. Right. So what I'm going to do here 
make this code changes here. Right, and I, oh, hang on. Before that, we do need to request an access token. I'm going to put this token here. Close await. And calling the office rule RSDK here, get token seventy, right? And we have to pass in a few parameters. The first is the audience, which is essentially which API do you want the access token for? In this case, it will be the identifier that we define for our API. And then we go pass in the scope, which really is what permissions are, are we asking for? Uh, which is case is the read secret. Right, and then once we get that access token, we do need to pass it inside the authorization header. Right, as a error. And then we'll log that response out. Right, so heading back into my terminal here, let's actually restart our app one more time. So if we head back to our app now, application here, let's actually call our API endpoint. And oops, you notice that it's still unauthorized, right? And if you look at our, our network tab, right, it's still returning a 401. So why is that happening? So kind of remember when we are actually sending over the access token to the API endpoint, it actually validates that access token. And in this case, my user that is logged in actually doesn't have the permissions embedded within that access tokens that the API is um, looking out for. And that's why it's not granted access to that API endpoint. Good segue here, just to talk a little bit about what is authorization and access control. So authorization and access control is really the process of defining and limiting which users are allowed access to which resources, right? So in our case, for example, we have a subset of users there that needs to access the protected resource. And there are many authorization models out there. And one of the most commonly used <clears throat> authorization model is role-based access control or RBAC for short, right? right now, Role-based access control refers to the idea of assigning permissions to users based on their role within an organization. And there are many pro, uh, you know, benefits of using uh, role-based access control, mainly around the simplicity and the ease of actually assigning or revoking rights based on roles. And again, there are many authorization models out there. Not all problem domains can be solved with role-based access control. But for our use case here today, where we have a pool of users, some with admin rights and some without, right, this role-based access control fits really well for our problem domain. So let's go ahead and actually enable role-based access control in Off0, which is actually provided out of the box. So if I head back to my API here, go back to settings, right? Let's turn on role-based access control, right? And let's actually click save. And it might be just worth pointing out uh, before we proceed further that if you look into, you know, my cache, we can take a look and see the access token before we make any changes. Um, oh, it's not having the access token here. Hmm. Maybe let me log out and, and just log in again. Just to kind of show you what the access token looks like. So let me log in again. Right side here. Right. Let's actually request the access token. And you can see that I do get back an access token now. Let's actually take a look and decode that in jwt.io there. Right, so let me just clear up this. 
So you can see the access token, it is actually returning me a scope without that read secret and without any permission. So really my API endpoint are checking these few parameters here. And because it's not present, realizes that the user who's calling the API endpoint not, is not authorized. So let's fix that. We've turned on role-based access control for APIs. Let, and we have defined permissions already, but if we were to assign these permissions individually to users, that would be tedious and error prone. So because we have enabled role-based access control, we can group these permissions under roles. So in users and roles here, if you click roles, let's create a role. Create admin, right, and create a role. And let's actually group permission to this role. So for admins, let's just give him the read secret permission. So add permissions. And let's actually then assign this user, or in this case me, with this admin role. So now I have this role. So let's actually now log out of the application. and log in one more time. So log in and I am logged in. So now if everything is working correctly. When I get my secret now, I should get back the secret code, right? And I do get back the secret code. If I look in the network tab, you can see now it's a 200, it's a success that returns me the secret code. And if we take a look at the access token, now that we've enabled role-based access control, we head back here, decode this, right? You can see now within this access token, I do have that read secret scope and I do have the permission read secret. So at this point, the API endpoint is receiving a, an access token with those permissions and thereby it knows that the, the person who or the application is authorized to actually access the protected resource behind it. Right, so I guess we're eight minutes away. Um, you know, just probably just to conclude before we jump to Q&A, right? So hopefully in this workshop here today, you know, you will be able to see and understand at least a little bit more about how you can implement authentication and authorization um, for, your, for your applications and API endpoints. Um, using Auth0 just really does that heavy lifting so you can simply and very quickly use something like that um, and not have to worry about implementing identity. And instead, like I said, focus on solving your key business problems instead. So thank you all kind of for joining. Uh, we have probably seven minutes left on the clock. If there are any questions, uh, please feel free to ask them. And Shirley did just paste there as well, um, you know, as a token of appreciation for your time attending. Um, you know, there's a link here that you can register to get an Austral t-shirt as well. So please, um, please do click that link if you want an Austral t-shirt. All right, uh, are there any, any questions? Um, I might as well just, you know, paste my, paste my uh, contact again if there are any questions. Over in the chat. Right, and again, if you guys do want to revisit the the code changes, or if you do want, um, so actually part of this uh, repository here, I do not have the code um, for my API endpoint. If you guys are interested to take a look at that as well, you know, please open up an issue here in GitHub or, or just ping me and I'll be happy to include that in the repository as well. Awesome. Well, I guess there isn't any questions. Um, do feel free to pop by over the Officer booth after this session if you do want to catch up as well. Else, I 
guess we have six minutes um, and you all get back six minutes of your time. Thank you all for joining. Thanks, Pradeepa. Thanks for joining. Okay, bye guys.